Can you do that again? Yeah, I can't remember what I was supposed to say. That was fine. I'm Herb, and this is Heather. We're post-career empty nesters who found the next phase of our lives lacking. Inspired by other YouTubers, we bought a small fixer-upper sailboat and spent two years building her into our traveling home. Now we're about to find out if it was all worthwhile. Subscribe and come along on our next adventure as we set sails to rediscover what's really necessary to live a meaningful life. So wind into myself, away from things I let go, floating on the waves. We go bottoms up. Welcome back to Sailing Garuda. We are still in Bimini, Bahamas. Yes, we did not actually plan on being here for more than a week, but when the weather didn't quite work out, uh, looks like we're going to be here longer and we're really not that disappointed about it. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> so it just gives us more of a chance to check out um, Bimini and see what's what's going on here. Yeah, and we thought maybe we would share a couple of our favorite things with you today. If the Bahamas were allowed only one contribution to the culinary world, it would undoubtedly be conch. Plentiful in the Bahamian waters, these tasty marine mollusks can be prepared a number of ways, but the most popular is diced raw in a ceviche-style conch salad. Are they easy to find? Okay. Do you go every day? Once, once the weather good. Oh, when the weather's good. Okay. Got it. Now, see, I, this is how they clean. Clean them like this. Yeah, beautiful. Look at ready that. To eat. Ready to go. A little lunch right there. Yes, sir. Ready to eat. Brilliant. All right. I'm going to look in the bucket. Oh, yeah, okay. So that makes it really tender? Butter. Butter is cream. Gotcha. Okay. What's going on? From my grandmother and from all grandmother. And there we go. Yeah. How long you been doing this? Oh, so you're just getting the hang of it. <laughs> Most of the conch salad is served at waterside conch kitchens like this one, the famous and friendly Joe's Conch Stand. My name is Bill Blaston at Conch Del Joe. Del Joe, okay. What's the secret to good conch salad? That's <laughs> all. Do you have a favorite? Not them all. Come on. The regular. Yeah. Do you get off work and still eat trunks? I'm back to work. It's not good. What's that? You don't want to eat that. That's what I would say. This seems like an appropriate spot to point out that unless it's grown on the island, getting fresh produce here can be a challenge. Well, getting anything here can be a challenge. Like most every island community, on Bimini, access to goods from the outside world relies on the mail ship. 
We're waiting out a weather window here before moving on, so when it comes time for us to make groceries, we're no different than any of the other residents and businesses on the island, which means we basically have two choices. Buy in the market when the mail ship is unloaded on Thursdays, or visit one of the local groceries, which likely also purchase their supplies the same way. This week, we found apples from America, pineapples from Costa Rica, mangoes from Mexico, cherries from Chile, and a variety of other goodies. I don't even know how to introduce bimini bread. It's uh, it's amazing. So it's uh, it's bread, but it's made with a coconut milk base, and so it is sweeter and it's lighter, but it's still dense like bread. I don't I don't even know how to explain it. Bimini, if, 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 if coming to bimini just for the bread would be totally worth it. <laughs> I may not know how to explain it. But I do know that some of the best and freshest Bimini bread that I have found is at Big Al's and Taylor Made Bakery right here in Bimini. Okay, my name is Indira Russell. We uh, have been operating since March 12th. Okay, and tell us who Big Al is. Big Al is my husband. All right. <laughs> and daddy. And my daddy. That's her daddy. <laughs> and he's my husband. I and love it. my life. Anything else? No. <laughs> my name is Anya Taylor. And bimini bread. Bimini bread. So you want to know the ingredients? Yeah, yeah we want all your secrets. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. <laughs> so the pro you just want to know the process? Sure. It's just basically flour, sugar, butter, egg. And then you know you activate the yeast, warm water. Okay. You let it sit in the water for about five minutes. So make sure it's smooth, bubbly. Yeah. Then I pour it in the flour mixture. Mix it up with my hand, I don't use a mixer. Everything is handy. Wow, show us the magic hands then with this. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it, you guys caught me late because I, this is going to be about 20 minutes before it's ready for me to pan it. Okay. And probably rise for about an hour roughly, depending on what the temperature is inside. And then bake it for about half an hour, 40 minutes. And that's, that's okay. it. So bimini bread's really popular. It is. What, and what made it so popular, it's you think? Sweetness. Sweet. It's sweet. Coconut, what's the? This one here is regular, but the most famous one is the regular because everyone likes plain, yeah. basically. But if you want the sweet, the coconut and the guava is very popular. Coconut and guava, yes. okay, are the most popular. Do you make it every day? You make I make, yes, How many loaves do you make a day? It really depends, but roughly I can make 20 loaves a day. Oh but my goodness. In a busy in a busy time, about 60 loaves. 60 or more. Yes, a day. I cater to the Missy Food Company. Okay. Normally they get about two dozen a day in a busy season. Gotcha. So besides that two dozen, I still have to cater for the baby. So right. roughly in the busy season you can make about sixty to hundred loaves a day. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah. Is that the wahoo? This yes, is, yeah, the this wahoo. is wahoo. Is that on the menu? Yes. yes. Oh, it is on the menu. Yes. Okay. This is wahoo meat. Yeah. And so we're cutting in fillets, and it's going to be battered and deep fried. Battered so and deep fried? Uh, yeah, in a batter and then deep fried. Okay. Okay. So this is a part of our menu today. So we have peas and rice, or yellow rice. Okay. Big macaroni and cheese, coleslaw, fried flat. Woo! We're coming back for lunch. And it's also good on a sandwich. Um, oh, you know, there you go. Bread, so she makes the yes, bun. then we can All try the, the bread. bread for the sandwiches. Oh, wow. That doesn't need anything. That is really good. That's delicious. All right, we're going to take a break in the middle of lunch to say we hope that you're enjoying this episode, and if so, please hit that like button for us. 
it's kind of uh, kind of interesting to show you Bimini behind the scenes. And if you like to see more stuff like this, please subscribe. It's free for you, and it really, really does help us out. Yeah, I'm a little hesitant about including this next part I get. Well, I don't know. I think... Including it or doing it? Well, a little of both, I guess. Um, you know, I recognize that there are at least the foundations of a bit of an ethical dilemma here. You know, anytime I think that you're, you know, feeding a wild animal solely to facilitate, like, a human encounter... I, I don't know that doesn't it just doesn't necessarily sound good to me I'll just say that I, I don't maybe it's maybe it's one of those butterfly effect things uh, you know I, I think I'm, in, I'm kind of at least reconciled this with myself by saying this I, I feel like humans and sharks have a have just a really complex history you know uh, Hollywood has us all terrified of them the major media will hype you know any encounter um, because they need to sell you cereal I, I just don't believe there that sharks get really a, a fair shake everyone seems terrified of them but no one seems to actually have had any kind of an encounter so I, I feel like they don't they don't quite get this the, the story right or perhaps they need to be advocated for more so that's kind of what I'm after I guess here a little bit today I think their story outweighs any dilemma that I'm gonna have so um, the simple truth is this Sharks are being decimated worldwide, um, and it's not because of sport fishing or because of our individual fears, or it, it's it, it's almost exclusively due to this insatiable demand that China has for shark fin soup. They don't even consume the shark; they just cut the fin. They just use the fins in an artificially flavored soup. But it's a Chinese status symbol, so. Anyway, I don't want to get too far off on a rant. Let me just say this. The, the population cannot keep up. It, it's, we'll never know because it's Chinese fishermen, but it's estimated that as many as 300,000 sharks a day are removed from the ocean. That's like 100 million sharks killed every year. I feel like the sharks need more, um, you know, their story needs to be told probably a little bit more. And, and maybe interacting with them outweighs um, or you know telling the story in, outweighs um, this interaction I don't know I mean if you can't tell I'm kind of clearly still a little torn by that but the second reason though is this we're telling the story of the Bahamas and, and, and of Bimini in particular back in the 90s I want to say the oh I hope I get this right it's the Bimini field station is what I want to say maybe it's Bahamas field station I will correct that um, in the in the in the description below or I'll put a link up but um, was established to uh, to help uh, study uh, shark behavior and um, it has become one of the the world's it's, it's referred to as shark lab uh, whether that's a formal name or not just being in the dive community you know you always hear about it so um, this is a, a world special a world leading organization in the um, studying of sharks and it's here in the Bahamas and uh, I think it was 2011 the Bahamas went as far as to just simply eradicate any shark fishing it's actually even more than that you can't it's catching sharks it's um, the sale or trade of any shark goods um, sharks are a protected species throughout the entire Bahamas and this is one of the only it may be the only I don't know if you know any different add it in the comments but I think this is the only place in the world you can really do this so to tell the Bahamas story I feel like I need to include it so here we go Unfortunately, it was just about here that my camera died. Luckily, my dive buddy Jeffrey generously provided this footage. Thank you so, so much, Jeffrey.
this week's video. If you did, give us a like and please don't forget to subscribe. You know, we really did enjoy our time while we were in Bimini. And we were sad to say goodbye to our friends and the island, but the weather was right for us to move on. So we've moved on to the Berry Islands. We've crossed the Bahama Bank. So uh, please tune in next week for the worst sail ever. Turns out the weather might not have been so right after all. <laughs>